Howdy y'all, DJTJ here with Inkscape Tutorial 34, Tiled Clones, Part 1. To access the Tiled Clones dialog, you'll need to go to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. The dialog box will appear and the first tab is the symmetry. Now this first drop down is the general settings that you're going to use to create tile clones and some of the um, descriptions are sort of self-explanatory 180 rotation reflection um, but P1 simple translation is your basic one and I suggest you use that when you're first starting to experiment with tile clones because this will give you the most consistent just normal tiling that you would expect we'll be using that today under that in, you'll see this on every tab is rows and columns you can create your tile clones by using rows and columns and inputting the number that you want so I've created a little shape here we're going to select it I have rows and columns selected I'm going to click create now it is created a 5x5 five five grid of the squares something to note is that here is your original tile it creates one on top of it by default so you'll need to either move yours out delete it especially if you're having if your object is opaque like these are because it will change the color now with the primary or your parent um, clone or tile selected you have a couple options that appear remove and unclump remove will simply undo the operation unclump will randomize all the um, tiles and this is nice to make something that's very random and it's easy to do because it's just a button so we're going to remove those the width and height is dealing with if I want to fill an area with this so I've inputted inches there's also the your standard measurements and I put 10 inches by 10 inches so if we create that Inkscape is going to fill a 10 inch by 10 inch area with these tiles remove reset reset just set, resets all the functions on this tab to their base but we're going to leave them the same right now so we can go and see what some of these other functions will do shift is your next one so one thing to keep in mind is all these tabs sort of build on each other and work together so you set your first symmetry then you can set the shift then you can set the scale then you can set the rotation blur o, color and trace all the way down shift is kind of um, self-explanatory this is where it's going to move the tiles apart so once again we're set at zeros let's create it notice how these tiles are using the bounding box to bounding box touching and that's what it measure from is the bounding boxes right now so let's go ahead and remove those We'll adjust the shift up by 10% and notice that these are percentages. And we will create. So if we put our measure our um, shifts in like that, this is what's going to happen. It's going to shift 10% over on the x axis per row and 10% over on the y axis per column. And you get an effect like this. Go ahead and hit reset. So, remove. We'll go back here and let's try the opposite. Now, we have a nice little lattice layout here. And this is pretty standard in most of the time what people are looking to do when you're creating a tile clone. You can also use the randomize and this will do what it says is randomize it. The exponent adds um, a Z factor to this so if we up the exponent go ahead and reset all that um, alternate shifts between adding and subtracting so if we select those sorry you 
you get effects like this using the alternate remove let's accumulate so what accumulate does is it takes the factor of 10 percent and adds to it each time so it actually goes up so it's not just a solid 10 percent movement it would be a 10 percent movement 20 percent 30 percent and so on and so forth and if you do that this is when you get these nice effects so if you wanted something to look like it's spreading out some of those nice 80s um, graphics this is how you would do that let's remove this alright so exclude tiles now what it's doing here is it's excluding the size of the original tile from that and you get a bigger clump like this let's remove those it goes along the other axis so if you wanted something stacked like this scale scale works very similar to the shift except instead of moving things around now we're going to be scaling things up and down so let's go ahead and create because we still have our shift set at um, the 10 percent so scale now is we can start scaling these objects let's go 10 percent here and 10 percent here create notice how they're getting bigger and of course you'll want to have to set your shift you'll want to set your shift appropriately to make sure that these items shift properly let's remove that let's try to fill the area and do that it knows how it does the same remove alternate alternates the size between scaling up and scaling down so if we do it on both you get effects like this large small large small cumulate does much of the same as it do, did earlier where the scaling is cumulative so it's 10 percent not of the original it'll be 10 percent of the one before it so it becomes larger a lot faster because this is not 10 percent of this this is 10 percent of this and so on and so forth let's go ahead and remove that rotation rotation is very simple it's doing the exact same thing we are alternate is alternating between a rotation on one and the other the cumulative is the rotation is um, it is combined so if you did like a five percent rotation per row and a five percent per column you'll get it to do that if you accumulate those there should be a greater shift at the bottom and if we alternate some are shifted and some are shifted less and of course randomize on here blur and opacity you'll get this effect let's go ahead and reset that and the opacity is the same which will it will reduce it. Let's go ahead and do a 2% on this. Let's up it to 10. And you'll get those nice effects. So you can start seeing how some of the combinations of maybe a shift to scale and an opacity will give you some really awesome graphics very easily. Join us for our next tutorial, Inkscape Tutorial 35, Tile Clones Part 2, where we'll color We'll cover color and trace. Thanks for watching.